It's so important to have a good workspace. When you're heralded as leader of the free world, what you get up to behind your desk forms a huge part of your legacy. Turns out some presidential desks have had a pretty fascinating pre-White House existence too. In total, six different desks have been selected for Oval Office usage. Dig your nails into your comparatively awful IKEA flat packer as we talk you through them all. Number six. This is the Resolute Desk. It's a great desk with a phenomenal history. Many great presidents were behind this desk, but I like this. The Resolute Desk has had the richest and certainly most dynamic life of all the presidential desks. Its timbers were first used in the construction of the British Navy ship, the HMS Resolute. Its name carries with it a hefty chunk of irony, considering that, after getting stuck in Arctic ice during an 1852 voyage, the ship was abandoned. The crew were in search of remnants of the ill-fated and ultimately cannibalistic Franklin expedition. The Resolute, along with three other ships, eventually broke free from the ice of their own accord. In fact, the other three ships, as if to embarrass the expedition's leader, actually broke free before the men had left and were slowly gliding towards where they were gathering for evacuation. So, in short, the Resolute desk doesn't have a particularly resolute history. In 1855, the HMS Resolute was found by an American whaler, 1,200 miles away from where it had been abandoned, sandwiched between Greenland and Canada. The American powers that be decided to refurbish the ship and send it back to England as a gift. The gesture greatly helped soothe tensions between the two countries, who were once again on the brink of war. Queen Victoria had the HMS Resolute broken down in 1879 and created a few desks out of her. The American presidential desk of course being the most famous, but Victoria also commissioned a personal writing table. The most notable modification to the desk happened during Franklin Roosevelt's presidency, when he requested an additional wooden door to be added at the front, in order to conceal his usage of leg braces. FDR had polio, and the concern was that if the public widely knew about it, it would undermine his ability to lead. Number 5 the Theodore Roosevelt desk was predictably made during Teddy Roosevelt's presidency in 1903. However, the first Oval Office wasn't built until William Taft's presidency. And so, although Roosevelt did primarily use the desk in the executive office of his newly built West Wing, the first president to use it as their Oval Office desk was Taft. The original Oval Office was severely damaged in a fire that occurred in 1929. In the carnage, someone had the wherewithal to throw some tarp over the desk, meaning it survived the blaze. The incident sparked a redesign of the office. Initially, minor improvements were made, such as the installation of air conditioning and the shuffling of furniture. Four years later, in 1933, the entire West Wing was redesigned in an effort to ease the mobility issues of the incoming FDR. The Theodore Roosevelt desk was not used in the modern Oval Office until Harry Truman came to power. Since the 1940s, every user of the desk has signed its centre drawer at the end of their term in office. It's become a bit of a vice presidential favourite, being signed by Joe Biden in 2017 to mark the end of his reign. Done. Number 4. Following the 1929 West Wing fire, the Hoover desk was used in the Oval Office by Herbert Hoover and subsequently Franklin Delano Roosevelt. So attached was the desk with the unprecedented and likely never to be matched four-term presidency of FDR, so that it was essentially retired when he died in office. Number 3. Although this desk is forever linked with Lyndon B. Johnson, it actually predates Johnson's time in political office, having been made in the early part of the 20th century. Johnson was first elected to the Senate in 1949 and continued using the desk during his vice presidency and during his time as president. Johnson remains the only president to have ever used the desk in the Oval Office. Number 2. The CNO desk was the Oval Office desk of choice for George Bush Sr., but was actually built around 70 years before his term in office, as the workspace for one of the Chesapeake and Ohio railway bosses. It was donated to the White House in 1975 and, initially, placed in the Oval Office study by Gerald Ford. The study tends to be where the presidents do most of their work, away from the grander, more ceremonial setting of the actual Oval Office. They're linked by a corridor which is also used to access the president's dining room and private toilet. Trump hates how much time he has to spend on shitholes though. Anyway, Bush Sr. is the only president who used the CNO desk in the Oval Office, having grown attached to it during his time as Vice President. 
Following his one-term presidency, the incoming Clinton restored the Resolute to the Oval Office, where it has remained ever since. Number 1. The Wilson desk was used in the Oval Office during Richard Nixon's presidency, and was kept by the next president, Gerald Ford. It gets its name from Nixon's mistaken belief that President Woodrow Wilson also used the desk. Nixon directly mentioned this during his silent majority speech, in which he addressed people who weren't participating in Vietnam War protests, saying, 50 years ago, in this room and at this very desk, President Woodrow Wilson spoke words which caught the imagination of a war-weary world. A thing of the Vietnam War, it was total bollocks. The administration didn't publicly comment on the mix-up until the 1969 publishing of Public Papers of the Presidents, in which the silent majority speech included a footnote reading, Later research indicated that the desk had not been Woodrow Wilson's as had long been assumed, but was used by Vice President Henry Wilson during President Grant's administration. They were wrong again. The desk hadn't been ordered until at least 1897, which is 22 years after Henry Wilson had died. It appears no one with Wilson as their second name has ever made habitual use of the desk. The desk also played an important role in the broader Watergate scandal. The president had five microphones secretly installed in it, which accompanied two on either side of the Oval Office fireplace. Initially, they were set up to record whenever someone spoke. However, as Nixon settled into his post, he further modded the desk to include a button that allowed him to turn the microphones on and off at will. Reminds us of the classic supervillain setup. We can't help but think a trap door would have accompanied it nicely. Did you enjoy that? Let us know in the comments section. And please, like and subscribe if you want more.